What's going on? It's your boy Bowie here. Back at it with another video about MK1 and its relationship with Tekken 8 and the community at large. So, first I want to, you know, flex this mod. In case you're wondering how I got this, this is not in game. This is a PC mod that I got on Nexus Mods. These mods are free and easy to install. This particular mod uses Sub Zero's Order of Darkness skin. And so I really enjoy it. Um, this one skin it will be the primary reason that I'll be gaming on PC. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what's the purpose of this video? Well, the purpose of this video is to talk about the release of Tekken 8 and its impact on Mortal Kombat 1, specifically the players of Mortal Kombat 1. Now, me personally, I won't be impacted at all because I'm not playing no motherfucking Tekken 8. I am a Mortal Kombat player. Always have been, always will be. I'm an MK lifer. You dig what I'm saying? I've been playing Mortal Kombat since before Pokemon was out. I've been playing Mortal Kombat since the days where TVs had rabbit ear antennas on them bitches. That's how long I've been playing MK. I've been playing MK. I mean, I think y'all get the idea. And I'm going to keep playing MK. One way or another. You know. So I have no need to voice my dissatisfaction loudly with MK1 by jumping into a much more difficult game that, you know, normally I wouldn't even be playing except for the fact that it released the same year that MK did, you know. I'm not some of the motherfuckers out there. You know. Some of the people that might be in this very comment section. I'm not y'all. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking primarily about the passers-by that feel the need to loudly voice their dissatisfaction with MK1. You know. We got people... Comparing it to MK11 and saying MK11 was better, which, as I've noted before, I find that utterly hilarious because when MK1 or MK11 was out, people excoriated that fucking game for all reasons. Everything that game did was wrong when it was the new game. But now that this game is out, MK11 is somehow a paragon of what it means to be a Mortal Kombat game. That shit is funny to me. And I suspect that when Mortal Kombat 2 comes out and it pisses off a lot of people online, this game will be the paragon. And they'll forget all about sitting there saying that they were going to go and play Tekken and Street Fighter because both of those games are better than MK1. But anyway, um, however, the vast majority of the people who are subscribed to me and continuously watch my content, we actually do love MK1, even as we acknowledge that the game has flaws that need to be fixed. You know, we're trying to get better. We're trying to improve. We are actively seeking to enjoy the game that we love the best way that we can. And uh, the good news is MK1 is improving over time. NRS fixed the desyncing issue as far as I can tell. Um, they released a patch the same day that Tekken 8 came out, which I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but hey. At least they got it done, you know? But, uh... It's it's perfectly fine 
if you're a person who's in the comments because you just passed this video by and you have thoughts about MK and you are hopping onto the Tekken 8 bandwagon, it's okay for you to do that. But it's also equally okay to be like, fuck that, I ain't going and playing shit else but this. Or maybe I'll try Tekken 8, or maybe I'll play Street Fighter at some point, but I'm going to stick with my MK. It's equally okay to do both things. You know. But I'll tell you one thing that's not okay. One thing that's not okay is proclaiming to jump ship You know, loudly proclaiming to jump ship to MK or to Tekken 8 because you think MK1 is bad or you don't like it, and therefore, because you don't like it, it's bad. Like, for one, use a dick rider if you do that, straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? And I hate to be that blunt. And maybe some of you actually do enjoy that and that's what you're attracted to and you could do that if you wish. You know, I am not against you if that is your orientation. But what I'm talking about is somebody that's just straight up. Uh, they're doing. Uh, ass kissing of one game in order to demonize another one. You know what I'm saying? You got some people out here proclaiming that Tekken 8 is God's green earth to video or what's what's no God's gift to video games, not necessarily because of its own merits, but because they just want to make a point about disliking MK1. And uh use a coattail rider, use use a brown noser if you do that shit. Use a brown noser because you already didn't like MK1. You were never going to stick around and play it, even if the game was was exactly the product that we all wanted to believe that it was. You wouldn't be around anyway because you don't like the cameos. There is nothing that NRS could have done to make you stay and play this game. Nothing. Nothing. And it's important for the rest of us to realize that. And it's important for NRS to realize that too. You know? There's a certain segment of people that just can't be pleased no matter what you do. If you go left, they mad. If you go right, they mad. If you stay in the middle, they mad. You know? They are inconsolable. And therefore, you know, them fools is lost. You can't get them. Now, there's a certain segment of people who do have legitimate issues with various gameplay aspects. You know, and uh, that's all fine and good. I'll be right back. Hold on, y'all. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, there are legitimate issues with MK1 for sure, obviously. But one of those issues is not the gameplay. When you're actually in matches and playing against people, this game is super fun. It's super expressive and creative. You have so many options, except zoning. You can't really zone and win in this game, but that's okay. Um, like, the possibilities are damn near endless because of the cameo system. And it's okay if you're one of those people that never liked the cameo system and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But disliking something and saying that it's bad are two completely different things. And some of y'all don't know the difference between those two. Like, for instance, a person is allowed to not like Eminem. But what you're not allowed to do is to pretend as though he's not a rapping ass motherfucker. Like, you're not allowed to pretend as though 
he's not one of the greatest MCs of all time because he is you know you're not allowed to diminish the man's impact on the culture diminish his lyricism his expert lyricism wordplay anything anything in a rap song that can be done Eminem can do it and has done it you know the guy is extremely successful the guy has classic albums classic songs the whole nine record sales all of it so objectively speaking Eminem is one of the very best rappers on the goddamn planet and your preference does not change that fact you know what I'm saying and so you have people running around here they're sitting there using their preferences as vehicles to shit talk to the game and say that and make just completely baseless allegations and narratives about the game I had somebody in my comments I don't remember if it was my comments or you or uh, Facebook I don't I don't remember someone sat there and said that because bad matchups exist that means the game's not balanced <laughs> they were talking about Johnny Cage and because Johnny Cage is a strong character who has advantageous matchups against certain characters that means that he it means the whole game's not balanced and I'm like my guy you don't even know what you're talking about objectively speaking this is the most balanced MK title that has ever existed in terms of tournament viability you can take literally any character in this game pair them with at least one cameo take them in tournament and you can do well with them I've seen Sub-Zero players win tournaments I've seen Natara players get top three Matter of fact, the Natara player got second place in the tournament I'm referring to. Tampa never sleeps. Um, we've seen what Scorpion can do. And these were reputed to be the bottom three characters in this game at one point or another. And by the way, a lot of this shit happened before the patch. Before even the first patch. Okay? So, every character in this game is tournament viable. All of them that is the definition of balance now does that mean that all the characters are equally as good as each other no that's not what balance means that's not what that means it means that characters have weaknesses and strengths they have weaknesses to offset their strengths unless we're talking about Raiden uh, that stop them from being too good but even someone like Raiden he's got a bunch of strengths and not a real weakness but his weakness is sort of his mid-range game he can sort of be outspaced sometimes and you have to you gotta really understand neutral and good gameplay in order to do well with him and that's good that's how it should be you know but for people to sit here and make shit up about a game because they don't like it and they want to use this thing that they don't like to say that the game is bad, that shit is too much. That shit is way too much. But that's, what, that's the era we live in. You know what I'm saying? And those same people are going to now run over to Tekken 8 because they think the grass is greener. Well, let me tell you something, motherfuckers. For one, the grass is greener where you water it at. For one. And two, sometimes the grass is greener because it's fake. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with Tekken 8. From all accounts I've seen, this game is objectively one of the very best fighting games 
that has been made in the past couple years. It appears as though Tekken 8 is the MK9 of the Tekken series from, you know, early, you know, indicators. Of course, the game is only a couple days old, so everything's going to seem great and cute in this honeymoon honeymoon period. We don't know where the real problems of the game are yet. People ain't got a chance to get sick of the game yet. But those complaints are on their way. Best believe that shit. So, all you coattail riding, trend hopping motherfuckers that want to sit up here and talk shit about MK1 and proclaim that it's dead and the game needs to start from scratch and it's a bad, terrible fighting game and you're going to go and play Tekken 8 because MK sucks and all this, go on ahead. Get the fuck on. Get the fuck on. And don't let the door hit you on your way out. Since you left loudly, stay gone loudly. Stay the fuck gone, for real. And I'm not saying this because of no damn tribalism. I'm just saying, like, it just don't make no sense to sit here and A, complain about a game and say that it's bad while still playing it. For one, that don't make no sense. If a game is bad, I just don't play it. If I don't like a game, even if it's not bad, I just don't play it. I still play MK9. I love MK9. I will still play MK11. MK11 is a great game. It's not nearly as bad as people like to pretend that it is. It's not as good as people like to pretend that it is either. It's just a good game, but it has bad mechanics. MKX, I ain't gonna play that shit. <laughs> not because MKX is a bad game, but because I don't fuck with those mechanics. I don't fuck with the lack of footsies. I don't I don't rock with the the absence of neutral that exists in that game. You play neutral at full screen basically because people could just run up on you from wherever. And I know why so many novices like it because they don't know how to open people up and a safe 50 50 is a great way to do it. You know? This game doesn't allow such allowance. So I understand why a lot of people like that game, but I'm not going to sit up here and talk shit about that game. You're not going to see me looking up MKX videos in the year 2024 and typing shit in the comments. Like, no, I'm just not going to play. I'm going to play games that I enjoy, you know? Uh, so for one, that shit is weird. That's weirdo activity. Um, but two, um, when they do get to Tekken 8, and they do get into the meta and things evolve, one of two things is going to happen. Maybe three things. The most rarest thing is that people are going to actually stick around and play it for the long haul. But the other two things are, A, they're going to realize that Tekken 8 actually isn't the game that they thought it was. Because the any issues that that game has will eventually reveal themselves. And then them same people are going to quietly sneak back over to MK1 once more DLC starts popping up and shit like that. And that's what they'll use to, to explain their return, you know. Even if they even announce it, you know, they'll they'll sneak in back into MK, but loudly exit. That's one of the things that is going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen is they're going to get over to Tekken 8 and they're going to realize this game's hard as shit <laughs> compared to MK1. I can't even perform half of these specials. I don't understand shit about this game. I have to put in way more time to get good with a character here than I do in MK1. And wait until there's a character that like dominates the meta in that game 
and everyone and their mama start using them online. Wait until they wait until they run into that motherfucker. <laughs> That's gonna be the funny shit. <laughs> I mean, the game was just born, so we don't know nothing about nothing. But I will venture to guess that there's probably some character in that game that just that character so goddamn strong that they're going to like dominate the meta or maybe it's going to be dominated by a few characters and shit and then people are going to be whining online about them the same way they whine about Johnny Cage in this game <laughs> even though Johnny Cage ain't even top 5 you know what I'm saying like shit crazy but all in all you know what I think is so fascinating about this time is that we're really starting to get a real clear snapshot of some of the segments of the MK community and how NRS has coddled them for way too long. NRS has made them entitled and whiny and spoiled. And I think it's about high time that these people be told, hey, learn to adapt. This is a fighting game. Learn how to deal with zoning. There's a bunch of ways. We give you so many tools to deal with zoners. Use them. There's so many tools to deal with rushdown. Use them. There's so many defensive options that we have in our game. Use them. We gave a, a practice mode and a really detailed tutorial mode to help you learn how to play the game. Use them. Like real talk, I don't even think you should be allowed to complain if your ass ain't completed the tutorial. I'm talking about all the tutorial. You know what I'm saying? Because you got people whining about shit that the game already teaches you how to how to defeat. You know what I'm saying? You got people whining about zoning in this game. Zoning? Zoning. Okay. If you whine about zoning in MK1, I know for a fact that you don't understand anything about MK1. This game barely has any zoning, just like MK11 has barely any zoning. And MK11, MK11 zoning was stronger than the zoning here because you had meter burn projectiles and characters with mids and you know what I'm saying characters with sweep distance range normals and half screen normals and shit like that you have nothing of the type here barely the most potent zoner is Rayco and he has one projectile <laughs> And maybe close after him is Katana. And her main projectiles are high. The other ones are risky mids. Excuse me. That can get her blown up on a read. You know? Not to say that she can't zone. But I'm saying if Katana tries to win purely by zoning, she's going to die. You know? But anyway... Listen, I'll just say this. If you're a lifelong fan of Tekken and you love Tekken and you you were waiting for Tekken 8 to be released, feel no shame by the things I say in this video. I'm not even talking about you. Enjoy your game and enjoy MK1. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy both of them simultaneously, right? But those of you that are just shitting on MK1 and have been shitting on MK1 and using using Tekken 8 to do it kick rocks get the fuck out of here nobody's gonna miss you on your way out okay and just like this video fade to, faded to black uh I'm gone I'll catch y'all later one